Welcome back aliens, my name is Levin Reddy and in this video we are going to create a very simple Spring MVC application using Java based configuration. Now again when you make a Spring application you can use XML, you can use annotations or you can go for Java based configuration and in the earlier videos we have talked about Spring MVC using annotations or uh, using XML. In this video let's see how to configure that with the help of Java based configuration. So for that, what I will do is I will create a new project in my in my STS. Again, you can go for Eclipse as well, your choice. I'll be going for STS because it provides it does provide some extra features for uh, Spring applications. In fact, you know I will just change the perspective to STS here uh, to Spring. So now let me create a project. I will say new and I will create a my own project. Again, you can go for a dynamic web project, but then you have to uh, do lots of configuration by yourself. Let's use Maven. And now I will say next. Now in this you have to select web app project because you are making a web application. Click on next. Here you have to mention the project name. Uh, I can mention any project name. I will say this is Spring MVC Java. So this is Java based configuration. Yeah. So I will click on finish. The moment I do that it will it will try to create a project, a Maven project for you. So where is that? It's, you can see our project is here. Now it is giving you an error because I have not linked my Tomcat with this project yet. So let's do that quickly. So I will right click here. I will say properties, uh, target one time, select Tomcat here and click on apply close and you can see we have we have uh, rid of, uh, get, got rid of those errors. Now what I want is I just want to create a very simple application. So instead of going for a complex one, let's say I want to add two numbers or maybe I want to just print hello world. So just to make it more simple, let's go for addition of two numbers because we are not concerned about logic here. We are concerned about how do we create a project. So we already have an index file, right? So in this index file, let me just create a, a form. So I will say form action. I will try to call add. Yeah. And then I will, this will accept two parameters. One is T1 and T2 and then uh, we'll click on submit button. So let's do, do that quickly. Okay, so as you can see, I have just added two text field here, T1 and T2, and then clicking on submit. The moment I click on submit, it should call a, it should send a request, right? And normally, if you do that in servlet, what we do is we get a servlet, and then we we extend that servlet with HTTP servlet, and then we have to use two objects to fetch this value. Now, since we are working with Spring MVC, what we'll do is let's create a controller. Uh, here we can say new, and I want to create a class, and that class would be uh, what? Oh, first of all, I don't have a Java resource folder. Let's let's do that later. Uh, you can see it is going in a resource folder now. I just want to move that to a Java folder. Uh, if I say browse, will it give me object uh, option of creating a new folder? It's not giving that. Let's do that later then. I will just name this file as I will, I will controller as add controller. Yeah, and then I will say uh, okay, nothing fancy here. Just click on finish. Now this is where it will give you a very simple class. But then to make it work as a controller, you just need to use an annotation called as add controller. So there's no need to extend any class or uh, creating any specific method. You can simply say controller and your job will be done. So you have add controller. Oh, it's not working. It's because if you want to work with Spring annotations, you need a Spring Java files, right? And if you can see in this project, I have not added any Java file. It's missing. So how do we add those Java files? Just go to your PowerMaxon file and this is where you mention the Java files. Again, you can get these Java files from the Maven repository. Just go to Google and search for MV and repository. And by going there, you can search for Spring MVC. Uh, instead, of, instead of going there, what I will do is already have a thing, already have a copy with me. I will simply copy it from there and paste it here just to save some time for this video. So you can see I have added a Spring MVC dependency, which is, uh, which is 4.3.12. You can go with any version, it will work, it will, I mean it may work, <laughs> depending upon uh, when you're watching this video. So yeah, so this, this version works as of now. Now if I go back to the controller, if I say control space, you can see we got the, we got the import. Yeah, so once we have done with the controller, now we need a, we need a method who will take the, who will take the request, right? So I would say my method name is public string, it will be add, which will add two numbers of course, and it will take two parameters. Now how do you pass two parameters? Again, you can go with a very simple concept. You can create a, a request object, which is a stupid request object, uh, and you can simply fetch the value. Otherwise, you can use some special feature of Spring. You can say request param. Yeah, so I will say request param and the request param value will be coming in a format of T1. So the T1, or not this T1, you will say the value will be coming in T1 and the value will be assigned to int, uh, int let's say i or maybe num1. 
So in the value num1 will be assigned from t1. So whatever value you are sending from t1 will be assigned to num1. Now if by any chance if you are wondering what that t1 is, uh, it is basically a name of the field in HTML. So if you can see, uh, we have t1 and t2. So the same value will be assigned to num1 and num2 here. Now we just need to return a page name which we want to call. So after adding those two values, I will call a result page. I will say result.jsp. Technically what you should be doing is instead of returning a page name, of course you will be adding those two values. So you will say int k equal to uh, num1 plus num2. So don't you think you have two things to return now? One is the value and second is the page name. Because this page will have nothing. It will simply have, it will have a design of course. And the data will be depend upon this k. So as your k value changes, the data will change. So of course you cannot make a static content there. You need to make it dynamic. So how do you make a dynamic? That's a question, right? So what we will do is instead of using, instead of returning a string here, we can also specify that I want to go for uh, a model and a view object. So we can achieve a model and view object here. So we can say model and view MV because in this object, you can specify both the things, the model, uh, the, uh, the view name and the data. So I will say model and view. So once we, once we got this object, this k will be added. So we can simply say mv dot add object and we can assign the value of k and we'll set that in maybe, uh, so I will say add object. I will say this is my result and I would say I want to pass. So we're passing k with the help of a result key. Now once you got this add object, we can simply specify the uh, view name as well. So I'm, I'm trying to call a result dot jsp. And again, you don't need to return now a string format you can return mv because this mv has both the things the data and a view name and you can simply specify hey i want to return a model view object a model and a view object now if you are if you th if you are wondering you know even if i even if i return mv and it was string there i was not getting any error why it is not giving you any error it's because you are running your you are writing your java code inside resource folder and this mistake might happen when you work on a project so make sure that all your Java files will, it belongs to a Java folder. So what I will do is I will just create a new, new folder inside this and I will name that folder as Java folder. So I will say here in SRC in main, I want to have a Java folder as well, which is missing in this case. I will say Java folder and let's move this add controller here. Now you can see if I, if I make any mistake, it will give you error and we are getting error now. So it is num2. Thankfully it will, it is, uh, I've just moved it there so that I can, I can see the errors, but it went to a default package. That's bad. It should be some into some package, right? So I would say this is com dot telisco. So I would say package com dot telisco dot web. Yeah. And then I just move it to that package, particular package done. So you can see in our, in our, this, this add controller uh, in this, in this, we got our controller. Everything seems good, right? But will this work? Of course, it will not work because we don't have that page yet, which is result.jsp. Let's quickly make it. I will say, hey, I want a JSP page. It's JSP. And the name of the JSP page would, should be result.jsp. And I'll click on OK. In this, I just want to print the output. I would say result is colon. And here, I would say dollar. And I would say result. So that's it. It's just, this is how you print data. But will it work? Of course not. But still, let's see what, what error is. So if I run this code, if I right click and run as run on server, uh, I will say Tomcat server, I will click on finish. Okay. So this is where I got my output. Can you see that it is asking for two values? I would say four and five. If I click on submit, hey, it's not working. Why it's not working? Let's verify by going to STS and we have not got any problem here. The thing is, whenever you send a request, you have a very typical file here, which is called as web XML file. And this file is a main file for your application, right? This is where you define all the navigation. And unfortunately, I have not done any configuration. Now, first of all, we are not doing a normal server application. We are building a Spring FC application. So here we have to mention, hey, web XML file, if you get any request, just send it to display servlet. Now, if you remember in, in the Spring MVC theory video, I have talked about you in, 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 in Spring, you have a concept called a dispatcher servlet. Dispatcher servlet is, is responsible to navigate the entire application. So it is your front controller and we have not done that yet. So I can, again, we can do that with XML, but I don't want to do that. I want to do that with, X, with, uh, with Java, Java configuration. So let's, let's make quickly do that. So if you don't want to work with the XML file anymore, what can, you can do is you can create a simple class, a very simple class, right click, new, and I want a class, and I will name this class as my 
front controller. Again, you can name this class as anything you want, but this looks cool, right? My front controller. Now this class is responsible to load. So this, this class is responsible to mention, hey, this is the Spring application. This is a Spring application which is based on Java-based configuration. So how do you mention the configuration? It's very simple. Just to make it work, you simply need to extend a very small class name. Okay, when I say uh, small, uh, it's very big. So we have abstract. So class name is abstract, uh, annotation, config, dispatcher, servlet, initializer. Okay, you don't have to buy hard this name. Normally when you work on a project, you can just simply copy it from anywhere. So yeah, so you just need to extend this class. So this is abstract annotation, web con uh, ab abstract annotation, config, dispatcher, serv dispatcher servlet, and initializer. So what I will do is I will just try it. So this is an abstract class basically. So it will ask you for such a certain parameter or certain methods to implement it. So I would say add un unimplemented methods. Don't get scared looking at this three things. It's very easy actually. Now if you remember, whenever you when you whenever you used to do the configuration in XML file, the web XML file, you need to specify the server mapping, right? For which request you need to use this application. And we used to always say, hey, for all the requests, doesn't matter, is it a request for a home page or a contact page, doesn't matter, you have to use the front controller. Now in this case as well, how do you mention that for all the requests you have to use it? So since you can see the return type here is a string array. So of course we have to return something in a format of string array. So I would say new string array and the values, since we, we have only one type of uh, request which we are going to accept, which is all, so we simply say slash. So when I say slash, it means for all the requests, just use this uh, my, my front controller. It's that simple. I guess that's it from this file. Now the second problem is, whenever you work with uh, Spring applications, you need to configure some other things as well. Now when I say some other things, I'm talking about, you know, we have a very unique file for every, every application. That is your something hyphen servlet.xml file. There you specify the configuration for this servlet. And we don't have that XML file, right? And of course, we don't want to work with XML file. We want to work with, with Java configuration. So let's create a file which will replace the XML file from there. The file name is, let's say, MVC config. So let me repeat, uh, we are trying to replace a configuration file, XML file for, for the dispatcher servlet. So in total, you have to get two, two configuration files. One is this, one is this, so this will replace your web XML file and this will replace your the dispatcher server XML configuration. Now in this class, you just need to extend one class to make it work and that is extends web MVC. So this M, uh, web MVC con, uh, configure adapter. So this will help you in navigation, navigating your application. So now you're enabling that, hey, I'm using Spring MVC, but you have to also give the permission. So you have to use one more annotation here, which is enable web MVC. Now, why we why we are using web, web, enable web MVC is because I want to use annotation based configuration. So again, you can uh, you can manually specify all the beans here, or so if you want to specify all the beans, you have to create a bean for add controller as well. But if you can see, I'm using add controller here, right? So why you have to navigate it uh, manually? So you can simply specify enable web MVC con uh, co uh, annotation. It will use annotations everywhere. That's the first annotation we have to mention. We have to mention one more. Now, if you remember in the configuration file of XML, if you if I if you want me to show it, I guess I have a XML configuration example here. So if I say web app, uh, web INF, you can see that we got we we use these two files whenever you want to configure with the help of uh, XML. So we use a web XML file where you mention the mapping, yeah, and then we mention telescope hyphen servlet where you mention the component scan. So these two things are missing. So this thing is configured using MVC config. So we have to use one more by specifying the component scan. So I would say component scan, and here I will mention the the component, the package where you have all the things. So I will say com uh, uh, com the telescope. So com the telescope has all the controllers. In fact, we have only one here, but we have to use that, and we have to mention that this is a configuration file. So I will say configuration. So on every class, on top of your so on top of your every class, you have to mention something, a component, right? But in, in in case of configuration, you just have to say configuration. Again, configuration and components are almost same, but this works. Yeah, that's it. You just need to mention these things, and you have configured everything. So this XML replacement, so the XML replacement here is this one, MVC configuration, and the WebXML file replacement is this my controller. So we have done both the configuration 
but with the help of Java based, Java based. Okay, now only one thing is missing. The one thing is now you can see we have created this configuration file, right? How would your my controller, my friend controller knows that this is the file you have to load, and that is what you have to mention here. Can you see that it is get root config classes? So you simply say, hey, I have to, I want, I want to return a list of classes, a array of classes, and if the class which want, which I want to return here is, its name is, it's MVC config dot class. That's it. We are good at this point. After doing all those settings, let me just restart my app, restart my server. I just hope it will work. And let's refresh. Let's one more say three and four. And if I click on submit, it's not working. It says uh, not going to disclose the one exist. Okay, what's wrong? Let's go back to the code. It says it is not able to map add. Why? But if you see if in this, oh, I forgot one thing. Now every method need to have a request mapping, right? How it will map then? So we have to say request mapping. Now since we are using annotation, so this is what you do. And in here you mention whenever you get a request for add, this is what you have to call. It's that simple. Let's restart once again. And I will go back here and on my output page, con submit. And it worked. Oh my god. It worked. It worked. But then the value which we're expecting here is something the value, right? 10. But it's, we are not getting 10 there. So what's the mistake? Let's go back to our code. Sometime, you know, your uh, this is expression language, which is EL. And sometimes EL is not. So when you create a Maven project, by default, it will not give you support for EL. Or it will ignore EL. You just need to say, hey, don't ignore EL. So you simply say, is ignored false. Uh, is ignored. You have to say false. Now, let's go back to the page and say submit. And you can see we got 10. So finally, we our application is working and we got the value which is 10. It's that simple. Yeah. So let me just go for a quick recap what we are trying to do here. We got index page where you're asking for two values. It will The request will go to the add controller where you are mentioning controller and mapping. And we are fetching the values using T1, T2. We are creating the object of model view because I want to send both the things, not just view name, but the data as well. So we got an object, we got a view, and we are return, 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 returning it. But to handle this, we need a front controller, right? And so we have two choices. We can go for XML-based configuration or we can go for Java-based configuration. In this example, I'm going for Java-based. That's why I'm creating my own front controller, which extends abstract annotation config dispatcher servlet initializer. You have another choice. We can go for web application initializer. It's just that we have to do lots of settings there. Using this, you just need to set minimum things like you have to mention for which request you are accepting this and what is your configuration file name. And the configuration file is here. In this, you are mentioning, hey, this is my this is my package, but I have all the components and I want to enable WebMVC annotations and then this is a configuration file. That's it. Now, I'm also planning to make a video where I will be using a servlet, I mean, Spring MVC application with Hibernate and that to be Java-based configuration. So till that point, uh, enjoy this. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button and do share this video with your friends. Thank you so much for watching.